Alright, I also watched Max Payne, so I'm going to give a good, uh, decent review about it. So the story takes place in New York, and it introduces with Max being in a frozen river with a dozen dead bodies. And then the story takes place, or sets us back a week earlier, so we actually follow the flow of events. He actually realized that in his backstory, his family, his wife and child, were actually murdered, and he's trying to figure out who did it, and has gone on somewhat of a murderous rampage to do so. However, it's a little bit controlled because he's also following the cold case files, which means he's more calculated than uh, Savage. Now, the story involves uh, a series of weird events in which involves his partner getting killed, or his whole partner getting killed, then some, uh, I don't know if it's a Russian, or some person with a European accent. She gets killed as well, and her body is found dismembered. Plus, we also find out some people are talking about wings quite a bit. Now, this hole leads down a rabbit hole that we actually discover his wife is actually was actually part of the uh, Sear Corporation, which was a pharmaceutical corporation, and she was involved in a project involving uh, soldier enhancing drugs, basically something that will increase morale and decrease fear. And most of those have actually went completely insane, as we soon discover. But one of the side effects of it was hallucinations, and many of the people we actually see talk about uh, wings. And one of the tattoo designers actually said that they're talking about Valkyries, the uh, warriors or the maidens who are the choosers of the slain. So overall, as he discovers the uh, as Max discovers the flow of things, he soon discovers that many of his partners, or many of the people he trusts, actually betray him and try to make sure that he doesn't uh, talk. Which is also the reason why, supposedly, his wife and child were killed. Because you knew too much about the project. So, Max finally actually takes matters into his own hands in a sort of Punisher-style murdering spree to get revenge for what has happened. For the story, the story actually is interesting. They, the thing with uh, many s storytellers is actually show, don't tell. But let the you, let the viewer or the reader follow along and put things together on their own. This is not exactly what uh, Tomb Raider did, in which the story is actually spoon-fed to everyone and we are supposed to expect that the outcome will be exactly what is said. But we're trying to piece some things together, so we're given a little bit over time, including the fact that we're never really shown what has happened with uh, the murder of his wife and, and, and child. But along the way, we actually see a little bit clearer vision of the story again and again. So each time it's repeated, we actually see a little clearer version. So the story I would actually give credit for, and it's actually very nice, in which we act and actually get me a little bit involved. As for some of the flaws, uh, one of the things that Max Payne has done, which I think is representative of the game itself, is to actually uh, follow along in Norse mythology. This is very hard to do without falling in your face. And many, uh, it's hard to actually get right using uh, mythological examples without falling into the mythology itself. But it does add some very mythical elements. For instance, the cult that uh, one of the junkies of the Soldier Project have been, has been called Ragnarok. And in one of the scenes when uh, Max actually takes the drug, it actually shows the entire section, entire uh, background on fire with Valkyries flying around, which is supposed to be representative of Ragnarok himself, or as Surt, the fire giant that's actually supposed to torch the world. And again, representative of how he's actually taking down a seer. In other words, he's taking down the gods. 
However, the Valkyries I don't think were represented very well, because from the looks of it, Valkyries were actually more humanoid than anything else. And in their, all the depictions in the film, they actually looked a little bit more like harpies than uh, Valkyries. They look much more bird-like than anything else. Also, with the hallucinations, we seem to be focusing on the fact that we seem to dive into other people's uh, subconscious in which we actually see what they see. And because of that, it also means that reality seems to be a little blurred. We can't exactly tell the difference between the hallucination and the reality itself. That's fine, but the trouble is that when you when you focus on too much and when you add too much emphasis on the hallucinations, it's hard to actually get a grip on the reality as it is. The other thing that sucked as well was the ending. The ending was incredibly cliche and it just ended almost like you would like a horror film in which they add this very sudden ending and just stops everywhere else. But in fact I actually had to watch through the credits and watch the epilogue, which actually shows somewhat of a very loose end. Kind of like what many filmmakers do nowadays, in which they add uh, something like a sequel, or something that stems to it. It's very lazy writing, unfortunately, and... My trouble with this is, when you don't end it very well, it kind of... It gets really irritating. And even with some of the epilogue and add-on scenes, just by... It seems as if adding loose ends is the norm in many filmmakers as a way to add sequels. I haven't seen a Max Payne sequel as of yet, but I wasn't exactly sure how it's going to tie in, because we were given some evidence that more events are going to happen, but it seems as if it's taking a step backwards and having to revisit the whole story. The story itself has ended. He's made amends. He's wiped out all of his enemies. So why then does it have to continue? So overall, for story, I'd give it an A or a B because it actually it's very interesting and it's pretty cool to actually follow along. But some of the effects elements some of the trouble of discerning reality, some of the mythological elements, plus the ending they're all pretty much very irritating to me and kind of loses some of the thunder in the story. So that's Max Payne for you.